Good morning, everybody. This is Ashley from Florida Shelling, and I have a very fun video for you today. I thought I would give you a tour through my shell collection. I've had a lot of requests on Instagram to see my shells, and I thought, what a perfect day to do so. I have thousands and thousands of shells, if not millions, so I won't take too long going through all the shells, but I will guide you through all of them and um, let you see how I organize everything. So if you're ready, here we go. All right, so this is my setup. And I've got my beach pictures up, my shells, and the cat bed. So that's basically how it looks in a nutshell. Pretty simple, right? But this has taken hours and hours and hours. So first off, I actually want to show you these pictures. I did not do them. I bought them in an art gallery in Key West. And it's by an artist by the name of Abigail White. And she's a school teacher in Key West. She does this with acrylic. These are prints, though. Um, the acrylic paintings weren't available at the time they were sold out I went on a very busy weekend so I just bought the prints for now but I really like her style because everything is you know obviously Key West related but she makes everything in conks so if you look at this one there's another conch she makes houses out of them bars whatever she can think of she's really talented all right backing up so all the boxes you see, the wooden boxes you see are from Amazon. These crates on the bottom are all from Michael's. The pineapple is, <laughs> is from Marshall's. That is the cat's house. My pink little organization center right here is also from Marshall's. I really wasn't planning on showing that, but it just kind of appeared. So here we are. And then I get the most questions about these. And these are all from the container store. Um, there's different sizes. And they come in one big box. And then they come with dividers. So it can be divided up into six sections, um, three sections, whatever. And so it's really nice. So you can move the dividers around however you want. And then I also use these sizes where they're just single single sizes so but we'll get into more of that in just a second now the desk is from El Dorado it's a local furniture store um, in South Florida I purchased this one probably like two years ago in South Miami um, I've been using this as my desk for the last couple of years but I have kind of outgrown it and I needed a big off bigger office space and I thought well this looks great near the window and the shells look fantastic on it. It kind of goes with the whole vibe. So now we'll go ahead and start the shell tour. We'll start on the bottom. So here we have oysters and these oyster shells are very plentiful in, um, on the east coast of Florida. They're everywhere. It doesn't matter what day, what month, what season you go you are going to find a ton of oyster shells. Um, now, if you go on the west coast of Florida, you will never find any. It's pretty, pretty crazy. Next are lettered olives. I love lettered olives for some reason. You can't really do much with them, but I just love them. I can't help but pick up every single one I see. And so to give you a fun fact, whenever you pick one up, and it's shiny. Oh, here. This is a shinier one. That means this is a newer shell. So whatever, you know, animal was in this before, the snail has left its home or, you know, passed away, whatever. It hasn't been tossed around the water for very long. Now, if you see some like these that are more dull, that means this animal has been dead for a very long time or left and um, is, you know, maybe has traveled very far away. So we find all kinds. Now, another fact is that all of the 
olives you'd find on the East Coast come jammed with shells. There's nothing but shells here. So I had to pick every single olive I get. And um, I do my best. I think I get almost every single one. Now, if you go on the West Coast, they're always clean. They never have to pick the shells out of them. Here's one. I couldn't get that one out, but I got everything else out. I don't know what's under my nail. I think it's mascara. That's really bothering me and I'm really sorry. Um, here's my cat's hut. Let's see. She is not home right now. I'm sure she'll be by in a few minutes because she's gonna hear my voice. All right, we have three baskets over here. These are hack stones. Hack stones are considered good luck whenever you find them. And you are asking, what is a hack stone? A hack stone is a rock or stone that has a naturally occurring hole in it. Now you can find these on the beach, at lakes, um, wherever, any kind of water source, you can find these. And these are very plentiful on the east coast of Florida. And they come in all sizes, all colors. Um, some are kind of funky like that. These aren't as pretty, but I think they're still very cool. And regardless, it still brings you good luck when you find one. Next are cockles. Cockles can be pretty small or they can be ginormous. This is the largest one I've ever found. And normally I would throw this one back in the ocean because it's not pretty, but look how big it is. It's the size of my hand. It's unbelievable. It's not pretty at all, but I'm keeping it. And you can see the little barnacles have been in there. So I got a lot of those. Those take up a lot of room, but they're really nice to put other shells in. This basket is different. This is in a collection of one shell or another. These are all the shells I collect and um, they've gone, so well, they go through two washing phases. So these have all gone through soap and water and dried. And now I put them in the basket and when the basket is filled, I put them in like an acid bath. And the acid takes away all the white calcium that you see on the shells. It's also what's on my hands. It's just calcium that can be taken off. And so by removing the calcium, it makes the shell more vibrant and it really makes it stand out. And plus it's very clean. Um, for instance, actually this shell right here smells really bad and nobody's home, right? Nobody's home, but it just smells bad. So that will also take care of the odor. Okay. Moving up, we're gonna go over to these wooden boxes. And let me see here. One moment. All right, right here, we have little coquinas. All of these coquinas are still together and I don't wanna pull any of them out because I'm so scared I'm gonna break them, so. I just, <laughs> I'm gonna leave them down there. But they're great to make with art projects, maybe like butterflies on a canvas, or um, I've seen some people put gold foil around them and make necklaces. It's really neat. Next are uh, calories. Most of these are coffee beans. So these are what they look like. They're really neat shells inside. I kind of like the shells inside on these. It gives it some personality. Now we don't get a whole lot of these on the East Coast. So um, this is actually all I've ever found in about seven months. They're very hard to come by. Although I have made some earrings, so maybe this is all but 12. Next are speckled talons. Talons, I'm sorry. Very cool. It almost looks like an angel wing. So 
So that's been dipped in acid and still has calcium on it. it doesn't always come off, but that's okay. Next are ivory tusks. Now, these are, they're not from an elephant. They are from the beach. And they just have a funny name. But look how cool they are. Ah, oh, that's a pretty neat. So those are easy to walk by if you're not paying attention. Um, or if you don't really know much about shells, you'll walk right by them. Um, a fun fact is that tusk shells are neither univalves nor bivalves, but they belong to a rather primitive class by themselves. They feed on microscopic orca organiz organisms. I can't say that word. Um, so that's pretty neat. And the live animal lives in an upright position with its larger and anchored into the sand. So when you see it, it would be like, let me get it right here, like that. It's neat. Who knew, right? All right, over here, we have Imperial Venice clams, Venus clams. I love these, these are so cool. I like to call them chunkies. <laughs> They're just so neat looking. They're so neat. And look at that one. That one has been around the block a little bit. I mean, that must be so old. Makes you wonder, right? If only the shells could talk. And so let's see. Um, the, a fun fact about these is that the sh thick shell rolls may help the shallow burrowing clam avoid predation by drilling gastropods. Um, and they're usually whitish, light gray, or tan with a few blurry rays. That's what they usually look like. Next, we have turkey wings slash zebra arcs. So I've got two of these. These are part of my mini collection. So these are very tiny. I sell them and have them in big and small. These are all the small ones. I mean, look how tiny they get. Look at this. Oh my gosh, no, I can't grab it. Look at that. It is so cute. It is so cute. Love those. Now let's see if I can get these all back in the in the box. All right, next up are checkered knee rights. I only have one right now because I just got sold out. Um, Christmas wiped me out pretty good, so these are also hard to find. I love finding these because they're so colorful and they're black and white. Um, so it, you know, they're so different than any other shell that you find. No other shell is, well, there are other shells that are black and white, but not like this. Next are lion paws. These are, these come in like different sizes. Um, it's so hard to find them in good condition and whole. They're always broken when you see them on the beach. Always. Like that. <laughs> like, this is wild that I actually have some that are whole like that. It never happens. That's why I hardly have any. And then they come large. They, um... They can get as big as, gosh, what's the size? Like seven or eight inches, I believe. And they're so impressive. And, you know, it's, they're rare enough to be a quest shell for many beachcombers. All right, so let's put these back. All right, next in this box, love these. These are scotch bonnets. Oops. Scotch bonnets are awesome. These are one of my favorite shells too. Just look at them. 
They're so cute. They're so cute. Next are common nutmegs. It's pretty neat. Kind of a lot like the Scotch Bonnet, I think. Again, very rare to find. So neat looking. Next are urchins. You'll hardly ever find them like this. Usually they'll, you'll find them with spines. And then once you, they die, the spines dry up and you pick the spines off, they look like this. So I have a few more, but they're on display. These are sundial snails. The bottoms are very cool looking. Look at that. They're so detailed. Hello. <laughs> Next are deformed shells. These are shells I find that are just deformed. It's like they started growing and then they got broken. It's bothering me so much. Um, I like, look at that. It, they're just so neat. I don't know what you would do with them other than just have them on display. But isn't that cool? Love it. All right, here we go. These are called Pennsylvania Lucines. Very beautiful white shell. Smooth, simple. I love it. They're just gorgeous. Here we have top snails. So they don't look like much, but then you flip them over, and guess what? They're flat. <laughs> it's neat. And then, you know, if you didn't know better, you would think that it's broken, but they're not. That's just how they're made. Oh, that one's broken. I still kept it though, because it was really big. My camera won't focus, there we go. It's a little broken, but it's still okay. Here's another one. Hmm, so cool. Here we have more olives, and these are mini olives. They're like little babies. And so I keep these separate just because they're so cute and I don't want them to get lost in the mix. Like, look at that one. Oops. It's so tiny. I even have ones that are tinier than that. And it might be in here. I mean, it's so tiny. I should have taken it out before. It's, oh, there it is. Oh, there it is. Oh. oh, there we go. Look at that. Look at that. It's so tiny. How is that even possible? Huh. Next. These are dove snails. And I guess this is turning into a long video, so I'm going to try to speed it up a little bit. Maybe I'll make a different video of like different shells to give you more facts about each one. These are calico scallops with barnacles on them. These are hard to find. I love these. Next are frond oysters. Ooh, that one has a little worms, worm thing on it. Can't think of the word right now. So cool. I like these. I just don't know what to do with them. Maybe like a good art project. Here we have um, rough scallops and Atlantic Bay scallops, just like a little mix. And it's basically just all like bright orange and bright yellow scallops, like that. These are very, very pretty and they're small. Here we have red scaly scallops. So I'll just pull out, try to pull out one good one for you. So usually they're more red and solid and not so orange, but um, they only have like one wing on a side. They don't have both and that's how they come. And again, a lot of people think they're broken when they're not. These are limpets. 
Well, since I think there's four different species. Oops, come back here. And they have a hole in the middle. Three of them have holes and one doesn't. The next um, is gonna be a new YouTube video I'm gonna be making. It's gonna be fossilized shark teeth from the Peace River. So I'm gonna be filling that one up later this week. These are the same as the red scaly scallops, only they're purple. These are very pretty. They're just purple. Oh, that one's not as pretty. Where is it? That one. I love that one. So beautiful. Just a nice purple shell with one wing. Next, we have dwarf surf clams. Not too special. They're not very pretty, but they're kind of neat. Maybe good for an art project. We have um, American augers. They're fun. We have um, dark surists, and I'm pretty sure that's what these are. I mean, if I'm incorrect, please uh, let me know in the comments, but um, there's a lot of shells that look just like this, so I'm, I'm pretty sure it's dark surith. Here we have um, shiny Atlantic augers. Same thing as an auger, but is more shiny and smooth. Here we have us button snails, chestnut turbans, and star snails. Um, mainly all of these are chestnut turbans, and they look like that. Pretty cool. And again, they're like flat. Oh, I'm sorry, they're not flat. They're like kind of flat. They can look broken if you don't know better. Here we have Sally's augers. That's not a Sally auger, that's white. Sally art augers are augers that are black or have like a dark purplish tint, like that. Pretty neat. Okay, next are broad rib carditas. Next we have comb bittersweet clams. Grab one for you. They look like that. They're nice for projects. And then moving over to this side. Over here we have whelks. Oh no! Don't do that. Okay, so we have whelks, and then we have more zebra and turkey wings. And in the back are like closed Ziploc baggies of things that are ready to sell. So on my Etsy, um, I have like packages, like um, like 30 calico scallops, like just little packages made up that I can sell. So that's pretty fun. All right, down here, we have black, black shells. A lot of people ask for only black shells, so I just made it like a complete drawer of them. They can be cockles, they could be calico scallops, they could be anything. If it's black, I put it in here. Here we have knicker nuts and sea heart beans. Here we have bittersweet chevron clams. Buttercup leucines. And then same thing as these, they're just larger, larger bittersweet chevrons. And these are fossils. And these can be anywhere from 400 million to 60 million years old. So that's pretty neat. Or it's covered with them. Here, I'm not gonna spend too much time on. These are just shells with pre-drilled holes in them. So these are just basically ready to go for arts and craft projects or to sell. Here is like mix match miscellaneous. These are shells that I don't know what they are or I haven't had time to put them away yet. I do try to put everything away, but if I'm not exactly 100% like sure of the type of shell, I don't put it in. I want to be sure because I don't want to backtrack and redo work <clears throat> or I don't have room for them. That's another reason. <laughs> And then back behind them are um, Florida Fighting Juvenile Conks. Moving right along, I'm trying to speed this video up because I guess I talk a long time. We have brown sea glass. This is a giant piece of sea glass I found. It's pretty cool. 
and I just put it in here for now because I get tired of looking at things on display so I don't you know I put things away temporarily all right um, let's see here and then we have whoops we have cross crossbarred crossbarred Venice snails spectral bittersweets orange and striped Florida prickly cockles, calico clams, and these are called lady in waiting. This is the Florida spiny jewel box. These are a mix of murexes and drills. Here we have jingle shells. Next are waffles. These aren't really called waffles. That's my nickname for them. They're broken pieces of shells, usually on cockles. I think they make good arts and craft projects like rooftops, shingles, um, stuff like that, shutters. This is Wham Pum. Atlantic Slipper Snail. All right, now let me try to get this back in here. You pull them out all the way, they do come out. All right, next we have spectral bittersweets. These are cool, they all have stripes on them. Love those. Next to them are Atlantic Bay scallops and Atlantic Calico scallops. These are beautiful, just beautiful. Every single one is beautiful. You can't find a bad one in the batch. I love this. Next are the Southern Quay Hog. These are classic white bivalves. It's your ordinary white shell. Here we have Shark Eyes. That one's broken, but I still love it because it's huge. Here we have banded tulips and true tulips. Cut ribbed arc. Black and white ponderous arcs. Favorite talon. Giant coquinas. All right, here we have Kitten paws, more sea glass, all sea glass I have except for brown, corrugulate jewel boxes, yellow leafy jewel box, these are called uh, spondylus, also known as thorny oysters. They're all very colorful. Next are stout tagless clams. Moving over here, we have sand dollars. We have tiny star sand dollars and biscuit sand dollars. Yellow prickly cockles. Pen shells. Um, these are called, what are they called? Cut ribbed arcs and incongruous, incongruous arcs. I can't pronounce it, but that's what they are. Here we have starfish. Heart shaped rocks. And then I don't want to drop this. So smooth rocks. Just normal rocks that have been smoothed over by the ocean. Granite. This granite washed up naturally on the beach. Pumice. Same thing, naturally washed up. And these are smooth shell pieces. Broken shells, they're just smoothed over. We're almost done, guys. 
and these are big shells that I have that um, I just don't always put out because I get tired of looking at them, but we have a lion's paw, giant. We got two of them. Queen's helmet. Let me get rid of this thing. This is a cool shell with tons of like barnacles and stuff on it. Let me see. Queen's helmet. So neat. I just can't look at it all the time. And then um, they call these like river. I can't remember the name of them. River something. They come from the west side. And then this is just like a rock with a piece of coral on it. It's actually attached. It's really neat. It's so neat. You don't see that very often. And then here we have coral. These are coral frags. They are dead. They're not alive. When the coral dies, it turns into stone. And then you can pick it up and keep it. And it's not bad. And then last but not least, I'm going to take you over to this one last spot. These are like some of my best sellers. Here are mixed minis. They're just all shells I find that are extremely small. And it's just like a little bit of everything. It's not one particular type of shell. Like there's a little jingle shell. It's just a ton of them. Same thing, but these have holes in them. So you can use these for art and craft projects. Here you have zigzag scallops and round rib scallops. These are flat. They're like pancakes. Let's see, it looks like a bulldozer ran over them, but that's actually how they are. Pretty neat. Um, these are the same ones there as the uh, large ones are solid orange spectral bittersweets. They're just tiny. They're so tiny. What is all that? Oh, I think that's hot glue. What's that doing in there? Not really surprising though. So they're just tiny. Here we have all white ones. And then we have um, the bittersweet ones, the ones with the stripes. I call them sunbursts. All miniature sunbursts. And then here are like my best sellers. That's not weed, that's shells. <laughs> Um, these are the same thing. I sell a lot of these, so I had to take up two compartments. These are all the Atlantic Bay scallops and Atlantic Calico scallops. And they are just tiny, 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 and so freaking cute. That's it. So just two little things of that. All right, thank you so much for watching. I'm sorry it took so long. I didn't realize how interesting all these shells could be and how many facts I know. So maybe in the future I'll make another video and kind of um, tell you more about each shell individually. Until then, thank you for watching and follow me on Instagram. My handle is Florida underscore shelling. Like this, um, not this movie, it's not a movie. Like this video and give me a follow, tell your friends. And until next time, I'll see you guys around. Bye.